Assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace. This is Sumayan Khalifa with the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta, welcoming you to another amazing day of Ramadan and with us sharing with you uh, some insights. Well, today's going to be a little bit different. Uh, today we're bringing uh, Mr. Tariq Abdul Haq and Mr. Amin Tomi, who have been very instrumental in making our inspiration so successful over the, the weeks that we've had them. So today's format is I will ask them questions and they get to answer the questions. How good is that? So I'm so excited to do that. So first of all, Tariq and uh, I mean, welcome. We're so glad you're here. And, um, you know, Ramadan is, is really important for so many people, but for different reasons. So tell us, what does Ramadan mean to you and why is it important to you? Tariq? Well, for me, the analogy to me is a, an oasis, a cool oasis on a large desert. And um, the heat is shimmering, looking, and... Uh, I see that oasis and get it close to it. And once I enter uh, the month of Ramadan, it's actually a cool, refreshing, reinvigorating experience. Um, all of the stresses of the ordinary, rushing to do this, being a husband, being a father, working, so many responsibilities. And I get to just refresh in this month of Ramadan. So that's what what it, one of the things that it means to me. Thank you, no way, I love that. How about you, Ami? That's awesome. Um, Salaamu Alaikum, greetings of peace, everyone. Uh, to, to me, I've always associated uh, Ramadan with an opportunity to reset, uh, to, to an opportunity to take stock of where I am, um, both spiritually as well as physically as it relates to uh, relationships with my own family, with my own friends, uh, with everyone that I, that I have in my life. And it, it's sort of a, a, you know, stop and assess, stop and, and, and see where I'm at on that front. Um, and I've often associated uh, Ramadan with the original story of Revelation of, of the Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, when he was visited by the angel Gabriel, uh, who commanded him to recite or to read. And um, at the end, the angel Gabriel, when the prophet said, I am not uh, a reader, or uh, what do I read, or what do I recite? And, and uh, the angel Gabriel held him, held him tightly, uh, to the extent that when he released him, the prophet Muhammad felt sapped of power. He said he felt very weak. And it was at that time and in that physical instance that revelation started. So this is what I look forward to. In, in Ramadan, I look forward to be in that state, both physically and mentally. And, and so I find peace in that and looking forward to it and, and uh, experiencing that. That's awesome. I'm going to tell you that for me, I worry so much about Ramadan, especially when it's very long days before it gets here. I worry, how am I going to do this long days, no food, no water, it's hot. Uh, where am I going to get my energy from? And subhanAllah, when Ramadan gets here, maybe the first day or two are kind of tough to do, but um, just the benefits way, way outweigh the hunger and the thirst that a person or myself could be feeling. So um, yeah, just uh, love the month and how it brings the family together. All right, are y'all ready for my next question? The next question is, what surprised you about Ramadan 2020 with all the shelter in place that we are uh, going through? I mean? Um, first of all, nobody saw this coming, uh, not the least of which me. So I had no idea uh, whatsoever that this will be the, the uh, experience that we will have where we are uh, sheltering in place and we are uh, away from our extended community. So one of the things that, that I used to look forward to as many other Muslims the world over is getting in touch with their greater family, with, with humanity at large, uh, whether it's through uh, public iftars where everybody is invited, uh, be they Muslim or from any other faith tradition, everybody is welcome to come and share in the breaking of the fast. We, we're missing that. We're, you know, that's surprising. That's kind of disappointing. 
uh, uh, from, from, a, from that standpoint. But what I also found is there's always a blessing in whatever God sends our way. So the, the biggest blessing for me is uh, I'm getting to experience uh, Ramadan with my family uh, on, a, on a whole lot more intense level than in the past. In, in past Ramadans, as soon as we break the, the iftar, plans are being made of going to the mosque to join with the community to, to do the congregational prayers. And, um, and, and that, you know, we're, we're deprived of uh, this year around. And, and so the, all the time is being invested uh, with the family. And, and that's been a, a welcome surprise. Well, you, Tariq, what surprised you about Ramadan 2020? Well, I would echo what Amin is saying in terms of the large gatherings that I was looking forward to. Ah, well, this month has that special feeling of mercy and love. That's a, and I said, well, maybe it may not have that this time because we're not going to be able to get together in the big gatherings and pray the Tarawih prayers and listen to the recitation and tears flowing when we're listening to it and then people hugging each other and but what I found is he has found is now that's happening inside my house, inside my home. And it's wonderful because I have reconnected with my wonderful wife uh, in a deeply spiritual way um, and with my children. And I feel that peace that I felt outside when I was going to the mosque. I actually feel the peace now inside the home. And I would have never thought that would have been possible had we not been in this unique situation. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. So there is a silver lining that um, Dan particularly known was there, right? Yes. Wonderful. And, and the fact that I can cut my hair, that has been surprising. <laughs> so we all, we all learn lessons from our life experiences and Ramadan 2020 is no different. What has been the lesson learned uh, for you um, from a Ramadan 2020. What are you gonna take forward with you from Ramadan 2020? For, for me, it's never say you're going to do something mm. without first saying, inshallah, if it be God's will. And of course, that's in the book of James in, 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 in the Bible as well. And Muslims are always saying, inshallah, but this time we really were throwing a curveball. We had all of these expectations all of these, and then all of a sudden, everything changed. Everything changed completely, almost as if it was turned upside down. So it's always be ready for the unexpected because the unexpected sooner or later is going to happen. Um, and then despite that, there's always a way. Allah always provides a way in every situation. He has certainly done that for us in this uh, COVID-19 situation. Thank you. How about you, Amin? I think for me, it's, uh, it, it's similar, uh, echoing what Tariq had said, which is to savor the experiences and, and to be present in those experiences, be it, um, you know, a simple prayer that a person may be performing by themselves, being, uh, be it a congregational uh, prayer, or be it even a conversation with a friend or a family member. Uh, to actually be present, uh, not to take it for granted, not to say that, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm busy, I'm just going through the motions, and I'll catch up later. There, there may not be a later, and I think that's, that was, has, has become evident uh, through the past two months or so, where a lot of things that we took for granted, a lot of uh, places that we took for granted, be it in our uh, mosques, masajid, and other places, uh, you know, we, we, are, uh, we are away from it and, and we're fasting, as, as our colleague uh, said yesterday, we're, we're, you know, it's a form of fast by, by abstaining from that uh, connection. And, uh, and so savor it and, and be present is, you know, one of the things that I've, I've taken from this. Wonderful. Now, both of you are very important members of the Islamic Speakers for Atlanta, and traditionally the ISB has done a lot of outreach to many communities during Ramadan, uh, just to have them experience uh, etc. And this Ramadan with shelter in place, how do you see um, the ISB taking this um, to the virtual world? Where are some of the things that happened that you want to share with us? 
Tariq? Well, I, of course, I'm noticing I have to call attention to the, uh, the banner that you have in the background, the ISB Atlanta builds bridges one interaction at a time. And so whether that interaction be at the mayor's iftar that we've had the last three years where we had 100 people, a couple of hundred people um, at City Hall, or it's a virtual platform where we have 100 guests calling, it's still one interaction at a time. It's just a different platform. But if we focus on the interaction and not so much the platform, we're able to do the same thing. So that is, is, has been a key aha for me. I didn't think that we would have been able to have the intimacy with a Zoom platform that we have actually been able to establish. So again, it's, okay, don't overthink it. Go with the flow, find the silver lining and focus on making the interactions happen. Wonderful, thank you, Amin. Yeah, yesterday we, I mean, it Case in point, yesterday we had we had a wonderful um, Zoom meeting that had over 60 participants, 67 to be exact, uh, with the temple, um, and it was a uh, um, a wonderful uh, opportunity to uh, experience fellowship, to experience uh, uh, a a truly uh, intimate uh, bond and experience and exchange experiences and finding out finding out commonalities between some of the practices, some of the fast practices, the Ramadan practices and the uh, Jewish uh, fasting uh, practices as well. And more importantly, what it means to the person, to the parishioner, to the person uh, experiencing that ritual, it's very similar experiences. It, it's, um, um, it, it's truly amazing and it's truly wonderful that no matter the platform, whether it's being within the same physical space or over Zoom, Ultimately, it's the human connection. It's the bridge that's being built uh, that's important. So long as there's an intentionality of building bridges with others and reaching out uh, to dissolve differences and to dissolve misunderstandings, uh, then you know we'll we'll um, uh, we'll endeavor to do it. And and the ISBers have always been uh, dexterous in uh, in adjusting. Uh, sometimes uh, our speakers may show up to engagements and the AV doesn't work and that doesn't stop us. And, and uh, COVID-19 isn't going to stop us either, um, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Thank you very much to both of you. Uh, any final words before we wrap up? I'll just echo what something that Amin said, savor the moment and savor. And then what Ustad uh, Zainab Ansari said yesterday about how quickly the time passes. So realize Allah is always present and make sure that that's the first connection. Thank you, Amin. Absolutely. Uh, be flexible. Uh, do, not, do not fall into any uh, habitual existence. Uh, intentionally, uh, intentionally experience uh, life and, uh, and adjust uh, things. You know, the only constant is change. So. I think COVID-19 has proved that uh, the only constant is change. So nothing, um, nothing stays the same. Savor it, enjoy it, find the positivity within any situation that uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throws at you and, uh, and make the best of it. Wonderful. Thank you to both of you so much for sharing your thoughts and your insights. Uh, that has been a wonderful conversation and hope that our audiences have enjoyed and learned from our conversation today. And uh, we ask you to please support the work of the ISB at isbatlanta.org. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you again on our YouTube channel. Assalamu alaikum.